Welcome everyone, my name is Siti Ratira and for today I'm going to present a paper titled Cyberbullying in the Name of God, Critical Discourse Analysis of Online Response to the Act of the Hijabing in Malaysia. This paper was published in 2021 by the authors uh, named Natrah Noor and also Bahia Abdul Hamid. So let's uh, proceed. Hijab has always been held as a significant symbol to religion. It's like the visible markers of Islamic identity. However, the controversy surrounding hijab has extended beyond its religious significance, and images of Afghan women in niqab and burqa have influenced the political debates and legislation about hijab. After 9-11, heightened Islamophobia led to discriminatory and violent attacks against Muslim women, forcing some to remove their hijab for self-protection. However, the second and third generation of Muslim women responded differently to these uh, misconceptions about them. So they use social media to break uh, and reimagine their identities as active participant by actively participating as the members of civic, uh, political and social domains of the Western society. The increased visibility and the acceptance of hijab then now impacted the hijab to become the normative identity markers in Malaysia. As hijab become a normative identity marker for Muslim women in Malaysia, women who do not wear it are marked by their non-conformity. Societal pressure and also state-level hijab policies have made it difficult for these women to, uh, to exercise their agency in relation to hijab. Consequently, some women engage in the hijabing, which is a voluntarily act of taking off the hijab. This act differs from the forced the hijabing, which occurs due to the hijab banning policy. The hijabing is often stigmatized as a moral failure and attempt to promote liberal ideologies. In late January 2019, Imam Ibong, a Malay Muslim celebrity in Malaysia, announced her decision to remove her hijab after almost five years of banning it. Her announcement received a national coverage, both news and social media, and was even picked up by the Telegraph. Inspired by the nationwide coverage and backlash faced by Emma's the hijab uh, decision, this paper aims to fill the gaps by exploring how women who have decided to remove their hijab are, are being perceived in Malaysia. And also, the study wants to enrich the existing literature on hijab by including Muslim women who do not cover or choose to remove it or no longer want it. Um, apart from that, the study literature review dis discusses social networking sites such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook have emerged as a significant medium in providing the most up-to-date news and information. However, the lack of uh, accountability in social media interaction has created a new form of online aggression known as cyberbullying, which can cause more nebulizing effects to the victim than traditional bullying due to the viral process of the internet, uh, internet sharing. Although there is no consensus on how hijab should be worn, Muslim scholars argue that it is compulsory for women. However, the hijab is also a symbol, a symbolic function for Islamic political uh, and political ideologies, and removing it can bring about public criticism and abuse. As Emma Maembong experienced this firsthand, receiving praise initially for wearing the hijab but facing widespread criticism when she removed it in 2019, this study aims to critically analyze the linguistic pattern and ideologies embedded in the negative comments towards Emma. Uh, so these research objectives are to answer two questions, uh, which are what are the discursive strategy employed by Instagram users in their comment to Emma Maimou the hijabing post, and also how do this strategy work in tandem with the us versus them schema that contributes to positioning Emma as the other or the outer group. So. due to the text noisy nature, including spelling errors, slang, and also repetition. NVIVO 12 Pro software was employed to analyze the data and generate word cloud to determine the overall sentiment of the comments and to identify uh, frequently used words. These words were then extracted for further linguistic analysis using the Venn Dye Ideological Square Model 2006, which is a model describing the group polarization pattern to which they belong positively while, uh, while depicting uh, people outside the group negatively.
For finding the software, generated the top 10 frequently used word in the comments for the linguistic analysis. Guided by the Venn diagram Micro and also Macro Level Analysis approach, the study found 25 key or rhetorical discursive strategies that can contribute to the Earth versus Time schema. However, due to the small scale nature of this research, only the five most frequently discursive strategies employed in the comments were analyzed. These strategies are disclaimer, authority, irony, lexicalization, and burden. Excerpts of the comments for each strategy are represented in the slide for this discussion. So the first strategy that is most uh, frequently used in the command is disclaimer. This is not surprising since the people often have strong opinions regarding the hijab topic. So disclaimer is a strategy where it involves starting the command with their positive intention and unbiased statement. For example, like, uh, no offense, I don't mean to condemn you, but uh, it will proceed with a negative evaluation of uh, Emma's decision. So this strategy is, um, is aimed to save face where the commentators avoid directly uh, insulting or attacking Emma, which could harm their own moral extent. Uh, moral standing. So what they do, they emphasize positive qualities about themselves, making it appear that they are objective, rational, and non-aggressive. So this aligns with the first aspect of Van Dyke models, where positive attributes of, of us are emphasized. The next frequently used strategy is authority, which involves user referencing superior entities or figures to establish authority over Emma. In this context, the most commonly used word is God or Allah in Arabic, as seen in the axiom. So the commentators use the authoritative uh, figures to justify their claim, highlighting positive attributes uh, that associated with us. It is important to know that the writer utilization of Allah, the Quran, and the Prophet companions serve not only to validate and legitimize their claims and argument, but also hold significant because these authorities are river and second. So meaning that if Emma was to challenge these um, the commentator's argument, it is seen like um, she is challenging the words of God. So that is for the second uh, strategies used. So the third one is irony with sarcasm being the most frequent form. Instead of directly attacking Emma with harsh language like go to hell, the writers or the commentators express their insult through sarcastic remark. For example, like they might say things like you look beautiful without hijab, may hell welcome you with hearts wide open. So this shows that the commentators downplay their negative trends in order to create a positive self-image while hiding their true intention behind sarcasm. According to the Van Dyke model, this aligns with the third aspect uh, which is the uh, this emphasize this strategy to emphasize uh, the negative thing about the in-group or us. Um, other than that, the author also discussed, the paper also discussed the frequent mention of hell in the excerpt is due to a belief uh, where women who do not cover themselves will face severe punishment in hell, which is also a way to distinguish between good and bad Muslim women. The fourth one is lexicalization. Lexicalization is a rhetorical technique used by the commentators to create a contrast between the positive self and negative of other. In this case, the excerpt consistently portrays Emma in a negative strong words like stupid, trash, loser, and attention seeker. Based on the discussion, the comparison of Emma to trash is meant to insult her, suggesting that she is a worthless and dirty. This harmful language, based on this discussion, can cause emotional and psychological harm similar to other offensive terms. The commentators even extend the insult to Emma family, uh, reflecting the cultural value where daughters are expected to uphold their family reputation. So these negative attributes reflect underlying belief to our, um, about the hijab. Consequently, Muslims who do not comply with these obligations are considered unworthy, immoral and dirty, thereby justifying the insult and humiliation that Emma faced. Last one is the burden. In the given excerpt, she is depicted as burdening her fellow Muslim who feel accountable for guiding her on the writer's path. This notion stems from the concept of da'wah where Muslim believe in actively spreading Islamic teachings. Emma is also portrayed as burdened to her father with the belief that fathers are responsible for their daughter's sins. So by presenting Emma as a burden, the writer or the commentators emphasize um, her negative traits while positioning the in-group as victim. This manipulation technique follows the Van Dyke description of burden which aims to highlight positive aspects of the in-group by making the out-group represented by Emma the guilty party to blame. So in conclusion, can be found on this analysis of comments on Emma's Instagram after employing the five most frequently discussed strategy reveals the polarizing trend where commentators uh, attribute themselves uh, the attribute negative qualities to Emma while positive qualities to themselves. So this answer all the RQ and RO of the research. And then not only the study shed lights on the linguistic nature of online aggression implicitly portrayed in the comment, it also portrays hijab as a valuable symbols of membership for Muslim women, Indonesia defining who belongs and who doesn't. So Muslim women who choose to remove the hijab like Emma will face resentment and hostility as they are seen as a threat and also a betrayal to the in-group shared belief. Therefore, the study paper suggests that the legal sections on cybercrime should take the offense of cyberbullying into method. So that's all for me. Thank you.